and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, now on screen today we've got a puzzle by Alexander Rapper. And I've been keeping an eye on Alexander's puzzles on Logic Masters Germany because I've noticed that the last four or five puzzles he's published have all garnered enormous approval ratings. Um, so Alexander is clearly, I think, one of the sort of up and coming setters on the world scene. Uh, we've done a, two or three of his puzzles before. They've always been really well received. And this one struck me as interesting. I think it only came out today even. Um, but look, there's there's not an awful lot of given information here. Um, and it's got quite an interesting rule set. And it's a rule set I approve of because it sort of combines chess Sudoku and sandwich Sudoku. Uh, of course, things I am very familiar with given our apps. Um, we are still busy with uh, hinting um, the, the puzzles we've created for our Miracle Sudoku app. Um, I spent a long time last night on one of Mark's miracle puzzles. Um, it took me about an hour to create the hints, but it was a really, really good puzzle. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll continue with that. And as I say, we hope that, that will release um, sometime around the second or third week of August. I'll put a link on the screen now if you're interested in seeing the Steam page uh, for Miracle Sudoku, the app. Um, now, let me read you the rules of this puzzle. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Clues outside the grid function as both sandwich and X sums clues. And in addition, Queen and King Sudoku rules apply. Don't worry, I'm going to explain what all this means. So X sums clues, what that means is that number outside the grid indicates the sum of the first X digits in the corresponding direction, where X is the first digit in the corresponding direction. So let's have a look at this 16 clue. Let's imagine this square was a four. That would be telling us that the first four cells in this row have to sum up to 16. If it was a three, that would be saying the first three cells sum up to 16. So X sums, X sums is pretty straightforward. But what we've got to remember is this is also a sandwich clue. Now, what does that mean? Um, well, numbers outside the grid indicate the sum of the digits between the one and the nine in the row. Many of you will be very familiar with this rule, but let's think about what it means in the con. Let's imagine there was a 1 there and a 9 there in this row. It would be telling us that the sum of those three squares has to equal, you've guessed it, 16. Uh, obviously, the 9 and the 1 could come in a different order. They could be like that, and that would be telling us those four squares need to sum up to 16. Um, so we've also got King Sudoku restriction, which means no digit can lie a king's move away from an equal digit. And that tends to operate most powerfully in cells like this. So if that was a six, that would be ruling a six out of all of those cells, because if this was a chess king, it could obviously jump here and here, as well as all of the usual cells, obviously just by normal Sudoku rules. And finally, we have Queen Sudoku going on here. Now, remember with Queen Sudoku, this restriction only applies to the number nine. You cannot repeat the number nine within a queen's move, which means along the same diagonal. So again, if this was a nine, that would mean that this square could not be a nine. This does not apply to any other digit. So we're not saying the five couldn't go here because the queen's move only applies to the nines. That, you must remember that. And indeed, when we released our Queen Sudoku update for our, therm, um, our chess Sudoku app, some people got confused because they thought that the uh, that queen restriction was applying to all the digits and they were uh, unsure about how any of the puzzles had a solution and indeed none of them would have had had that been a situation so just do the queen sudoku with the nines and that's all we've got going on i say it's all we've got going on that's quite a lot of rules but i i think I'm familiar enough with them that I, I should be able to remember what's what's happening. Do have a go at the puzzle. Click on the link under the video as usual. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, now, I've done enough X sums puzzles in my life to know that a three X sums clue is actually forced. There's only one number we can put in this square that's going to that's going to work. You know, if we try one, obviously one and three are not equal to one another, so that doesn't work. If we try three. That's implying the first three squares need to add up to three. Well, we can't put zero in those two, so that's not going to work. This has to be a two. This has to be the one. That's the only way this can work. And now look, we can use the sandwich property immediately. What do we put between the one and the nine? We've got to put cells summing to three. Well, given that we can't repeat the one and the two, that's going to have to be a three. That's going to have to be a nine. And we are off and running. 
Now the 10 clue. I'm wondering whether I should highlight where in normal sandwich Sudoku, what I tend to do is to highlight the cells that can't be ones and nines. I might have to do that here, not sure. Um, let's just have a quick stare though. We can, oh, no, no, the 30 clue. Yeah, the 30, in fact, the 30 clue is forced as well. It's just harder to see why. Let's look at the 30 clue. Let's ask what this cell can be. And in particular, can this cell be a one or a nine? Well, it can't be a one because one and 30 are not equal to each other. And it can't be a nine because that would imply that these nine cells had to sum up to 30. But we know the total for any column in a Sudoku is 45 because it will contain all of the digits from one to nine. So if we know this square is not a one or a nine, then we know that whatever we put in this square is outside the sandwich in this column. And therefore, we can do a bit of arithmetic and we can work out the value of this square because let's imagine that the, I don't know, let's imagine the nine was here and the one was here. What would the sandwich properties of this column be? Well, we'd have one plus nine, that's 10. These squares in the sandwich, they'd add up to 30 which would mean these two squares have to sum up to five to make the column total 45. So if we know this square is outside the sum and has to be a number that's five or less, we nothing's gonna work here because apart from the number five, because we've also got to make sure that the first few digits add up to 30. So if we try and put a three in there, obviously that's not gonna work. Can't make three digits add up to 30. You can make four digits um, add up to 30, but this is outside the sandwich sum. So now what would happen is we'd have to put another cell outside the sandwich and that cell would have to be a one to ensure the cells outside the sandwich were equal to adding up to five. And we can't repeat the one in the columns. So we can't have one outside the sandwich and then that configuration because although you know the arithmetic works the rules of sudoku do not work um, so this has to be five these five squares are going to add up to 30 and this square has to be a one or a nine and can't be a one so that's a nine this is a one and can we go further than that we know these Five squares add up to 30. No, these three squares add up to 16. Uh, no, I'm not quite seeing how to do this. So I think we're gonna to have to look somewhere else. Where can we look? 16. So this clue, what can we put in this square therefore that's gonna mean yeah. Well, we can't put two because that would imply those two squares are gonna to add to 16. We can't put three because there's a three here. So this, this has to be four or five and it can't be five, look, because if it's five, you can make five squares, five cells add up to 16 if all the numbers are different, but not including a five, you've got to use one, two, three, four, and six. So this can't be a five, this is a four. Four, and these four squares are adding up to 16. So these two squares are adding up to nine without using four, five, or three, six. So this is one, eight, or two, seven. And this, we can use the one, can't we, to rule out one, eight in that direction. So Okay, so can we, I'm just wondering if we can go any further than this. I need to put 16 in the sandwich. Ah, no, that does, ah, this is, in, this is beautiful, beautiful logic. Right, let's have a look at this row. Let's imagine this square is not a one. Well, 
we now know that the 1 is going to have to be in one of those three squares because these two squares are ruled out. So the 1 would have to be over here. But a 16 total uh, for the sandwich is at least a 3 cell sandwich total because you can't use 7 and 9 because obviously 9 is part of the sandwich crust. So what that would mean is where are we going to put the 9 if we put the 1 in one of these cells? And in particular there's nowhere we can put it because we can't put it here because of the Queen Sudoku rule. That would see a 9 there. So the furthest away from the 1 that we put in one of these three squares that we could put the 9 is here. And that gives a maximum 2 cell sandwich which is not possible. This is the 1, therefore this is an 8. So we've got 11 here and we've got to get up to 16. So we either have a 5 here or we have 2 cells summing to 5, which we can't do because 1, 4 and 3, 2 are not available. This is a 5, this is a 9 and this clue is completely used. So we've now completely used this clue, this clue. Oh no, we've not completely used this clue because I need those 5 cells to add up to 30. I've now got 22 here, so these have to add up to 8 without being um, 1, 7 or 3, 5. So they've got to be 2, 6. These have got to be 3, 4, 7. And now this clue is basically used up. So I've used this one, I've used this one, I've used this one. I've not used the 17 or the 10 really. So, and I've actually limited this, haven't I, to 2, 6 or 7 into those squares. Right, so is there an easy way of making progress now? I've got to put a 9, look. Actually, actually, look, I've got, <laughs> I've got to put one and nine in this box. Where are they going to go? They can't go here because they're going to affect the X sums clue in a way that will not be helpful. So this is a one nine pair. And this, the, the Queen Sudoku rules means that can't be a nine because that's on the same diagonal. So that is a one. That's a nine. And now... I just wonder, we've got four nines in the grid and normally with Queen Sudoku, if you get four nines, you can... Yeah, hang on, this box, where do we put the nine in? That can't be a nine. Those can't be nines. Yeah, there you go. Where does the nine go in box seven? It can only go here because of the Queen Sudoku restriction. So nine in this box now. It's got to be in one of those two cells. I don't think there's a nine looking at those. Nine in this box then. Again, I'm not sure if there's a nine. What about nine here? I must be in one of those two positions. Nine in the bottom box, maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe with... Yeah, hang on. Those two are ruled out. That one's ruled out by that nine. So these two nines give us another nine there. And that's great. That gives us a nine here. So now we know where the nine... Are we, are we going to get... Well, we've got all the nines. There you go. That is a common trick you'll find with Queen Sudoku. Once you get sort of three or four nines in the grid, do try and follow them through because you will find it's likely that you can place all of them. Um, now, what do we do next? So this square has to be one, two, three, or well, it can't be one. It's got to be two, three, or four because you can't make ten with more than four cells if you're using different digits. Oh, where does one go in this box? Look, we can't place a one next to another one because of the King Sudoku rule. So the one goes here. Now I'm wondering where the one goes. 
the one, oh yeah, we can place the one in row four because of the 10 clue. 10 must be at least a two cell sandwich. So the one, and the one can't come this side now. So it's got to be in one of those two squares. It can't be here. This is a one. One's in one of those two cells. These two squares sum up to 10. Uh, and maybe, oh yeah, look, look at this square. 17, the maximum number of digits we could make from the X sums perspective is five and five is ruled out as is two. So this is a three or a four. Ah, beautiful, beautiful again from Alexander. Look at this. If this is a three, we know those three squares add to 17. Well, let's do some arithmetic on this column then. 17 plus one plus nine, well, that's 27, plus the 17 in the sandwich is 44. So what do I have to put in that square? It would have to be a one again, and that would repeat the one in the column. So this has to be a four. And these, squa these squares have to sum up. Oh, well, that's great, because now these two squares have got to sum up to 12. We can't use six, because that will repeat the six. So this has to be seven. This has to be five. There's no seven in these squares now. This can't be a two, look. That's another little King Sudoku trick. If there's a two in one of those squares, we can't put a two here, because it would rule two out from both of those positions. Oh, it's beautiful again. It's beautiful again. Look, if this is a three, we have to put a six here and we can't because of the King Sudoku restriction. So that's a four. Now this can't be a two. We know these, is, these two squares are two and three. Well, this one can't be two because of the two six. So it's three, two. Now this is an eight to make the sandwich total work. This, this puzzle is just, it's so beautifully set. It really is. Now that can't be seven. Um, so now I've used this clue. Ah, I've not, I can, ah, I can do this column logic again, can't I? Because now I've got these three squares, which add up to 16 plus 10 is 26. Yeah, plus 17 is 43. This is a two. Um, okay, so now this is a two by Sudoku. That's just using these twos. So there must be a two in one of those two squares. And I've used the 10, I've used the 17. I think I've used all of the clues. I've done the queen Sudoku. So I think we're just onto normal Sudoku with a king's move restriction. That, that feels like what we have to do now. Um, so those squares have got to be three and eight, and you can see we have a three there. So three and eight can be placed. Three can be placed here by Sudoku. Eight, oh, eight must be there by Sudoku. These squares are four, six, and seven. Can't see how to resolve that, but there may be a way. Let's look down this column, look. We still need to place six and eight into those two positions. One, ah, where does one go in column five? It can't go here and it can't go there and it can't go there. So one goes here. One must be in one of these two squares. We've got seven of the ones, oh uh, yeah, seven of the ones placed in the grid. Um, oh, I nearly, I thought there was some logic with threes looking. This three is quite powerful on column six. It rules a three out of all of those positions. But actually, I think there are still two valid positions left. Um, right, okay. So these two squares are three, four, and eight. Maybe have a look up here and check what's going on in the top. So two, three, six, and seven to place. Threes are in one of those squares. Twos are in one of those squares. 
sixes and sevens seem to be possible anywhere. Uh, da, 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 da. These squares then? Two, five, and se Ah, this two, yes. Two goes here. So this is a five, seven pair. Now, does that help with anything? So five must be in one of those two squares. Ah, there's a seven here, seeing that square, look. Should have, oh, and a four, oh, good grief, I should have spotted that. Look, four and seven both see that square. So that's a six. This is a four, seven. Seven is locked, ah, seven's locked into the same positions as five. This column needs three and six into the open spaces. Let's put that in and see if we can resolve it. Oh, we can, we can, because look, where can a six go in box five? This six rules out that square. A six there would rule both sixes out from box six. So this must be the six. This is the three. Um, the six fixes the six and the eight. That blocks an eight up there. That gives us a three, four pair. Now that's nice because this square now can't be a four. It would rule a four out of both of those by the king's move constraint. So that's a seven. That fixes the seven and the five in the middle. Oh, it's just beautiful. Where does seven go in this box now? Seven can't go there because of the king's move constraint. So seven shifts all the way to the bottom of the grid. That can't be seven, obviously. This has got to be three or four. And hopefully now we're on the home straight. I think we can place three and four in the central box. These two squares are six and eight. There's a six here, so we know we know the order. Eight's got to live in one of those two positions. These squares are one, four, and five. That can't be five. That can't be one. Four here hits that three. Well, it forces that to be a three. That, oh, that gives us the one. The one gives us the one here. This isn't one anymore. Um, so let me just try and spot what we need to do next. Eight must be in one of those squares. Three must be here, which gives us the eight over here. And plonks a three right at the top of the grid. The four, seven is fixed. Six must go in the top of the grid, creating a two, seven pair here. Five, seven pair here. Two, six pair here, which is resolved by this six, of course. Yeah, so I think we are now about to finish the puzzle. It's probably famous last words, but I hope not. Um, eight forces this to be an eight, gives us a seven, gives us a seven, gives us a five. Where does five go in this box now? Down there. That fixes all of this. <laughs> six here, six here, two here. Check. That's how to solve Alexander's new puzzle. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, I can't tell you how much pleasure I get out of solving a puzzle with such a minimal set of constraints, but it's very linear, the path. You can see exactly how the puzzle has been constructed. You can't maybe, you know, you can't see yourself creating it because it's just so clever. But yeah, just beautiful to solve. So thank you very much, Alexander. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments as usual. And we'll be back later with another edition, Cracking the Cryptic.